The book of Revelation has to be one of the most intriguing, profound, and intimidating of all inspired writings the Lord has given us. But it's also one of the most misunderstood, misquoted, and poorly interpreted writings within God's holy word. Some people even stay away from it because of these characteristics. But in the very first chapter, and right from the start in verse 3, we read this, Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written within it. So, there is no reason to be intimidated or discouraged from studying this amazing book. Just remember two helpful pointers before you get started. Review Revelation as you do most all other books of God's Word. Study it to be literal and chronological in order. Now, the author of Revelation, the Apostle John, had been exiled to Patmos, a Roman penal colony or island prison right off the coast of present-day Turkey. And it was there that this revelation, which means unveiling, was given to him. And what was unveiled? The state of the church at the time, the 70 weeks determined upon Israel, the great tribulation, the great judgment, and many, many, many more fascinating and ominous events. But what is and should be held the highest regard, the presence and appearance of Jesus Christ himself with all power and all glory, the Alpha and the Omega. And verses 14 through 17 tells us that his head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like the flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass as refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like that of the sun shining in its strength. If that doesn't get your attention, if that doesn't set the stage for the tone of this book, I do not know what will. It should be so prominent, Jesus' appearance, that it should be burned into our minds as we proceed through the 21 chapters to come. It is from Jesus, about Jesus, and ultimately brings all men to Jesus. Do not get sidetracked with all the trimmings and the side dishes of this revelation feast. Keep the main dish, the main dish, or the main theme, the main theme, Jesus. It's all about Him. He is not just the beginning and the end. He is and should be at the very center as well. And may this be true in each of our lives. May we be found as John in verse 17, worshiping at his feet and because of his grace, not afraid of what is to come because we belong to the one who is the great I am, the first and the last, he who lives and was dead and behold, who is alive forevermore, the one who has the keys of Hades and death. So read, hear, and keep this amazing prophecy and do it knowing that the time is near. You are greatly loved, so go and greatly love.